responsible for climate change. The worst flooding in a century. A trillion ton iceberg broken off Antarctica. Forest fires in the Siberian Arctic. Countries have committed to net zero. Copenhagen has become the world's first carbon neutral city. It's 2045 and we're now living in a net zero society. This is the story of how we did it. Back in 2021, the energy sector was responsible for around three quarters of all greenhouse gas emissions. Our energy sector used to be so dependent on fossil fuels, which made up more than four fifths of all of our energy consumption. After a slow start, countries across the globe rose to the challenge. The real solution to producing zero carbon electricity came from our rapid expansion of renewable technologies. Hydrogen played a really important part too in storing energy for large amounts of time. Around the world, hydrogen plants used wind power to produce hydrogen gas that could be stored, ensuring energy supply all year round. Now, in 2045, around 70% of our energy is provided by solar and wind. And it was a single man's vision that transformed how much energy we could harness from wind. The same Danish inventor who helped create the first offshore wind farm. Henrik Stiesdahl. I had retired from my job, but I was not convinced that I had done all I could to avoid the climate change challenge. And therefore I got engaged with floating offshore wind. Traditional offshore wind turbines had to be fixed to the seabed. This meant they could only be used in shallow coastal waters. In the early 2020s, only around 5% of the world's electricity came from wind. That was why we looked at floating offshore wind, because with floating offshore wind, you can expand the water depths. Offshore floating wind had the potential to produce almost 10 times the world's electricity consumption. But when the first full-scale floating turbine was built in 2009, it was only made as a one-off and was very expensive. What I focused on was to bring in cost reduction technologies Henrik's floating turbines allowed for mass production, which was both cheaper and quicker. These foundations tended to take three to six months. And when we cut it down, it was 2.3 days. Our trick is essentially that all these parts were made in a factory, driven on trucks down to the port, and then put together in the port without any 